Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with our new podcast, No Border Blues. I'm here with Stephanie Tice, Blues Raccoon. This is a podcast that deals with international blues artists and the international blues scenes. Um, Johnny's known as the World Wide West Side Guitar Man and has <clears throat> been in the Chicago area 28 years. And it kind of toured extensively and collaborated with um, blues artists all over the world in Europe, Japan, and South America. And Stephanie Tice <laughs> recently produced No Border Blues Japan, which is the first American compilation of the underground Japanese blues scene. She became interested in international blues as a DJ in Kauai at KKCR, and it's just something we both have a passion about. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Our show today is sponsored by the uh, Chicago Blues Network. That's an educational, multifaceted platform that is dedicated to preserving and honoring the history of Chicago blues. So I'd like to uh, introduce our first guest, Ashesh Dangal. Thank you, Johnny. Namaste, Johnny and Stephanie. Thank you for this opportunity. My pleasure. And Ashesh is from Kathmandu, Nepal. And uh, he builds himself as the Himalayan Hendrix. And uh, I think you're probably uh, unique in your field in, in Kathmandu. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for that. It's very, um, very rare and difficult to find lots of blues musicians over here. Tell us a little yeah. bit about the history of blues in your area. I noticed that you did the blues festival there then, um, and other events. Were they, was that hard to put together and were they well, did a lot of people come and see the blues? Tell me a little bit about the history of getting the blues to your area specifically. Um, blues is quite famous in, in Kathmandu and some other part of the country. Uh, during the hippie era uh, in the uh, 60s and 70s, uh, lots of hippies from uh, Europe and America, United States, uh, came to Nepal. And they, they brought lots of uh, uh, blues, rock, rock and roll music over here. So um, lots of uh, people in Nepal are influenced by that. And... Uh, we have few bands, not lots of bands, but we have few bands who, who plays blues over here and they have dedicated their life for the blues. And uh, I did my first uh, blues festival in 2006, Kathmandu Blues right. Festival, and that was a huge success. So since we have lots of blues fans over here and I, I mostly play in the bars of uh, Kathmandu, so I've been uh, teaching uh, blues music for uh, for uh, Nepalese uh, Nepalese musicians. So we have quite a blues fans over here. And um, then I started to do a project um, North Meet South, where I play, uh, where I introduce with the local traditional musicians fused with the blues. Yeah. And then yeah. So now uh, the Kathmandu blues is there. Uh, North Mid South is there, and then now I'm doing Blues for a Cause Facebook Live series during this uh, pandemic outbreak in the world. And um, we have reached uh, 36 uh, series of Blues for a Cause, and Johnny has also played in the Blues for a Cause series. It was uh, quite exciting and fun. Thank you, Johnny and Stephanie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we saw that um, Aki Kumar played and also Lee Kanahira from Japan played on there as well. So that's great that there's... Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the connection, Stephanie and Johnny, for that. Yeah. Without you guys, it won't be possible. <laughs> it's, it's really neat that the, the artists that you've selected for this Blues for a Cause series are, you know, people from Bolivia, people from you know, lots of other places that I, I didn't know there were any blues artists in Bolivia until I saw it on your series, you know, for yeah, me, me too. So, yeah, me too. It's like, it's like blues has connected us in so many different parts of the world. Like, uh, I met this uh, friend from, uh, uh, from Paraguay, uh, Mr. Hashe. Mm -hmm. And then he introduced me with so, so many blues artists from Latin America. 
and because of uh, my dear uh, uh, friend um, and who also used to be my uh, manager in the United States, Shoes Holmes, who introduced with me with so many uh, blues artists in the United States, and Donna and Jack. Uh, so, so how I got introduced with so many blues artists from the United States, and then they brought lots of blues artists from different parts of the world. So we all get connected. And also both of you that you introduced with me with the uh, Japanese blues musician and the uh, Aki Kumar, uh, who, who has twisted with the Indian influence and the blues together. It's quite interesting, exciting. It is really exciting. Um, what I really like about what you're doing is you're also doing causes that are passionate for you. So tell me a little bit about those causes that you're working with now um, and what your passion is with bringing the arts and music and helping people. Tell me a little bit about that. The earthquake project I know was one of them and some other things you're doing. Yeah, um, I believe in uh, art with an activism. Mm -hmm. and that's why I think that's why I play. I, I like to play the blues. It's a, uh, it's more like freedom of speech for me. And during the during the earthquake, uh, I felt myself that I'm very lucky to survive during that massive earthquake in Nepal. So I contrib contributed my uh, six months of time time for the uh, for the earthquake victims. Uh, we we built lots of shelters and houses for around 75 different families and helped around 2,000 people during the, uh, during the earthquake. And this time, uh, during the pandemic outbreak, I think everybody is suffering, right? So why not we musicians heal the world through the blues? Yes. And also, uh, I'm, I, I'm native from Kathmandu, and there's lots of uh, things going on right now during the pandemic. It's like the government is taking over and uh, demolishing lots of buildings. They, they, were, they were cleansing the ethnicity of the Newar community. So I am trying to raise the voice against what government is trying to, trying to do. And uh, also like government is trying to create lots of fears during this pandemic. So we are raising voice against that. Yeah, I, I, I saw a song that you recently uh, did um, you had your traditional hat on, and yeah. I didn't understand yeah. the words, but the tonality of it was very um, sincere, and uh, it was very moving to me. So I was going to ask you about the words to that, but maybe Johnny has something else he'd like well, to... Go ahead. We, now we're in suspense, dear. <laughs> so um, it, it's kind of had a riff that went over and over again, and you were playing guitar. Do, could you tell me what the title of that song is in English, or a little bit about the content? Oh, okay. Um, Insults Towards Freedom is the song that I, um, I did, I composed in 2003. Oh. Uh, that was a very struggling, uh, struggling time, struggling phase of my life. So, Insults Towards Freedom, I'm not searching for the freedom, but I was Insults Towards Freedom. So, uh, I was struggling a lot. I was very sad about uh, what's going on in the society and what's going on in my life. Uh, um, I'm brought up in a very uh, uh, middle-class poor family. So, you know, it's like when you, when you are in a, a middle-class poor family, you will see lots of things going on in the society in a very different way. So I was uh, experimenting with uh, without words and just trying to play with the notes that how can I create that feelings? and express myself with the music. So that that's particular songs came like that. And then it's, uh, for me, it's, uh, this song is more based in uh, Eastern classical fuse with the blues. Right. You do a lot. Of <laughs> that's an interesting point that you made. And um, did you have a background in sort of Nepalese folk music or like Nepalese Eastern classical music uh, that you brought to this? Or is it something you also... Uh, going along uh i am i i, I like uh eastern classical music a lot like uh indian ragas and um uh newer 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 ethnic drums and uh yes obviously uh folk music from from my community 
uh, both the Newars and the uh, Nepalese community. So uh, the particular song in Susua's Freedom is based uh, on the sitar style sound. And I used to learn sitar for like uh, for a year. I, I've been uh, learning sitar at that time and then it, it was quite difficult to get the sitar for me because it was quite expensive for me. So I tried to create that sitar sound in my guitar and then I composed that song. <laughs> Who was your, you know, blues influence? One of your most favorite legends of the blues scene here in America? Um, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, some people don't call him a blues artist, uh, but for me, he is, he is uh, a real blues artist for me. Uh, Jimi Hendrix and then uh, uh, Howling Wolf, uh, Muddy Waters, uh, John Lee Hooker, uh, Buddy Guy. Yeah, I heard a little John <laughs> Lee Hooker. Uh, Stay Ray Vaughan. Uh, yeah. Great. That's great. The classics. Yeah. I, I, I love the, I, I love the classics. <laughs> That's great, man. Um, you just made my day. Yeah. Um, I see you've traveled everywhere, but it was interesting when I was reading about where you've been. Uh, you've been a lot to Norway, that, and you were in my hometown of Kongsberg. That's where I live. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. You're from Norway. Eleven years. <laughs> I lived there eleven years, and. Um, and I just really enjoyed the Norwegian scene. And I saw you perform with the Norwegian um, guy who won the awards, um, you sang with him. I wondered, how did you find the Norwegians for the blues scene and having you come in? And uh, I saw that they want you to come back. I saw some chorus. Yeah. <laughs> so how was, it, how was your trip to Norway? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, it's mind blow blowing yes it's fantastic it's uh they have some of the best blue scene in the world and uh how they uh how they love the artist and how they create the blue scene is something uh i haven't seen in different part of the world it's uh the way uh the people are so nice so humble and they really feel the blues no competition but it's like if you are a true artist, they will welcome you with their heart. It's 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 so nice. Even like uh, when I play with the uh, a Grammy Award winner Amund Murud. That's who I saw the video of. Yeah. Uh, down on the ground and we're playing your guitars. That was really yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, though he is he's a Grammy Award winner, he's so humble and he is so, so nice. You know, like it's I think it's it's very different than. Um, then American blue scene uh, and the uh, Norwegian blue scene, I guess. It's uh, for me, uh, when I was in Norway, it's quite easy for me to travel. And uh, I have almost uh, toured half of the Norway. And um, uh, I like to thank uh, Mr. Jon Gangdel for that. He is the one who really promoted me over there. Yeah. So how did you find the touring in the States then? Um, Say whatever you want, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, it was always uh, my, uh, my dream to uh, travel in the United States and see, see the culture, the community, since I play the American music, right? But I have never met uh, any, any blues musician from the United States. So it was quite, quite fascinating and, you know, like you have that dream, and then I traveled uh, in the United States in 2012 uh, for my uh, sister, sister's wedding ceremony. Uh, my sister's now, sister now live in the United States. Oh. Uh, so in 2012, uh, one of my friends, um, uh, Michael, he took me in different bars of uh, Texas, uh, Fort Worth, Texas, <laughs> in Dallas. And then he introduced with me uh, in this very special bar called Keys Lounge. Keys Lounge. And then, yeah. So I went there and then I started to jam with different musicians over there. And they welcomed me so nicely. I fell in love with that place. It's uh, 2012 is, um, 
really a blues moment for me because I have never played with the American blues band in my life. <laughs> and then I, I went there and played Texas Flow with the <laughs> American uh, blues band, you know. So, and um, they really welcomed me. They even like um, gave me a big farewell uh, when I came back to Nepal. So um, that was quite, uh, quite a memory for me. But another part is like, when you think about United States from Nepal, you, you, you think that United States is very, very rich. There's no poverty over there. Yeah. Uh, you will only think about the New York City, you know? <laughs> Uh, you, you'll only think about Dallas because most of the people will see this uh, Hollywood movie and uh, think thing like that. So I have never seen anything such such thing like the poverty in the United States, and that gave me uh, a different reality of United States at that time and how black community uh, live. And then since I play their music, I. Uh, I really felt very, very sad, you know, like uh, it's not only uh, when, when, when you listen to their music, you uh, being born in Nepal and then uh, you won't see that lifestyle over here. It's very, very different, right? I have only seen a few documentaries at that time, how the uh, how uh, uh, during the, those slavery times and all those um, uh, politics and everything. So that's really changed my uh, my thought. At a time. I'm glad to hear you say that because I think any blues artist really, what wherever they're from, I mean, whoever they are, they really have to grapple with and understand like the history of black people in America. Um, and it's yep. a full and long history and we haven't reached the happy ending yet. No, we so, um, but we're getting a, a good understanding and <clears throat> a lot of my interest is in the language and the lyrics of the original um, blues that came out of the poverty and um, of the black culture. Black culture at the time. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you a couple of questions about your lyrics, and if you um, if you start with your native language and then the transition to English and the words that you use to express yourself in English. And I'm specifically gonna ask you about Leech's Blues because I love that song. Okay. <laughs> you have a, a line in it that says, I can smell the leeches sucking your trust. I'm worried when you are out of the blue. I just thought that was, I always, really like to listen to people's lyrics and expressions. And I wanted to ask you about that song and particularly that, that stanza there. So tell me a little bit about that. Okay, um, Leeches Blues. Um, uh, that's from uh, my uh, fifth album, uh, oh. uh, Life to Live On. So uh, Leeches Blues, I wrote that song after I came back from a trek. Uh, I think that's a two weeks trek from uh, roll walling. And during my um, visit in roll walling, it's almost like a 5,000 meter high trek. Oh. And then during that trek, I experienced so many different, different, different things in my life. I, I met different kind of people that I have never met. And uh, I can I can smell the leeches. It's like, you know, like you will meet people who looks very nice from outside, but they will suck your blood. They will take all your money, rip you, rip you off, and they will go away. And you will, and you won't even know. You will just see the mark, right? And at the time when I was sleeping, sleeping in uh, in the room, uh, the leeches bite me. And then in the, when I got up in the morning, there was just a mark, and the mark was uh, there for almost I, I think two years. Wow. So, yeah, it's and it's it's very itchy. So, 
that's a uh, that's a deep satire for the people like that who who came into your life uh, and then uh, be like leeches or you know like if we if we see this pol political uh, politics right now and the people in the politics so-called government they will they will say very nice things to you they will say okay i'll do that for the people and the community and this and that and at the end what they will do they will make you slave right that that's that's uh, that, that that's kind of star is from that lyrics well i just wanted you to know that and acknowledge that that was a very profound line and i knew it had a story so thank you so much for sharing that story because lyrics are very important. And as we go on this adventure in international blues, I'm always interested in people singing in their own language and then feeling the tonality of what they're expressing and then also interpreting it in English. It always doesn't translate, but leeches is a very um, uh, powerful word in English. And um, I think you did it justice in that song. So that great song and great lyrics on that. And kudos for you for really developing a hybrid of a Nepalese and an American style and singing in your own language. That's the kind of thing that, uh, we, that, we, that we love to see. And it's so, it's so interesting from an American point of view. And I think it's I so think good so. for the blues as a genre to really keep it viable, to, um, to expose new people to it, and to, to have it live on in, in different forms. So I really like that. And uh, Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Um, I just have like one more question and then maybe you can play something and, and take it out. Yeah. Um, what's next for you nowadays, career-wise? Wow, yeah, career-wise, it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult, difficult question to answer because since this COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic outbreak happened in the world, it's very difficult to predict anything right now. It's uh, now in Nepal. It's we are in very strict lockdown. If you if you uh, if you read my uh, lines in the in my in my Facebook page, I have written something today about being one of the poorest country in the world. We are in a strict lockdown. And the government doesn't care about uh, feeding the poor. Only when, when, you, when you open your television or your uh, social media, you will only see the fears. In this eight months time, only around 200 and something people has been died. Around 35,000 something people has been uh, affected from coronavirus, but 20,000 something people are already recovered. So another sad thing is more than 1,600 people committed suicide during this pandemic outbreak. So you can imagine like 200 something died from COVID-19 and more than 1,600 people committed suicide. So this is, this is for me, this is like, uh, this is not good. It's like the government is not taking care of their people. So as being a musician, uh, I haven't worked for more than six months now. So I have spent most of my money for, for, for food and everything. Uh, uh, when we go go for live stream and then you, you, you will put your PayPal account and everything, but uh, most of the people they don't contribute for uh, for for during this pandemic because I think lots of people doesn't have money to contribute. Sure. Yeah. So the music business is really going down. Since we are an artist, when there is uh, uh, when the world is in really uh, economically powerful, then people will come out and listen to you and they will buy your songs and everything. But when people are in hunger, when, when people are dying from, uh, dying from hunger, who are going to buy your music? Who are going to listen to your songs, right? So 
Yeah, so it's a hard time for everybody's career, right? Yeah, now. yeah. So yeah, it's 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 a very difficult situation for we artists. So when it's over, you'll you're um you'll be, be back welcome back. Away, you know? Yes, well, <laughs> we'll have to do a an international blues um, festival or something. We'll have to coordinate and collaborate on yes. that. So um, yeah, the international blues renaissance. Do you think you could play us a song to uh, close this out? And we just really are appreciative of you taking the time with us today. You'll be in our prayers and thoughts and the people of Nepal as well as everyone in the world for this to end soon. And so we can get back on to playing music and writing it. Thank you, Johnny and Stephanie. Yeah. Uh, let me tune my guitar very quick. <laughs> oh yeah, I noticed you use a lot of all, um, alternate tunings. Is it yeah. Uh, but uh, since I'm playing spread and I bend a lot, like um, all the blues artists bend a lot, like so, <laughs> uh, it goes out of tune most of the time. So yeah, but this is a regular tuning in, in G. So um, it's a song uh, that I wrote in 2006, but I think this song still uh, brings the reality back most of the time since. Uh, 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 during this pandemic also um, outbreak, um, dark clouds all, all over the sky. It's, uh, it's, it's really a sad, sad time for all of us. So um, I like to dedicate this song for all the people in the world. Um, and uh, stay healthy and build your immune power. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sky. It rains so hard. The clouds all of the sky. It rains so hard. Sound in the sky cry. Oh. The clouds are of the sky. I can see no moon sign. See no star sign.
of the sky Everything seems so dark The sky is crying now God promise I won't cry But it's bleeding I'm feeling blue joining us on our first broadcast for uh, No Border Blues International and having you as our first guest. Yeah, and uh, tune in in two weeks for Aki Kumar. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. All right.